I'm going on a road trip by myself and I am packing, trying to decide what to take. I'm going to see um, a couple of YouTubers that are coming to a city close to the city that I live in. It's like three hours away, so I'm going to drive there and stay in a hotel for three nights, visit some friends, go to karaoke, um, have a meeting for work, um, see my cousin who's in a wheelchair. So I've got lots planned. But I got to get going because I'm meeting my cousin for dinner at five and it's almost one uh, and I have to go soon. So I'm going to show you guys how I pack in a duffel bag so that I can carry everything on my own. Um, and I don't have like a whole bunch of bags to carry. So I'll show you that. So I've got my son's duffel bag here that he normally uses for boxing. Um, and I stick my, I'm like so disorganized. I stick my um, sliding board on the very bottom of it so that it's like solid. And then I pack everything in it on top. So I have this sliding board and I normally don't use a sliding board ever. Um, but I always bring it when I'm traveling by myself just in case I can't get in the shower uh, or something. And it also just makes the bottom of the duffel bag flat and not sloppy. So that's why I always have it in there. Oh, I know what I did. Dumb. This isn't even how I packed last time. I put my thing in the bottom of it. Ugh, I forgot how I did this last time. There's a zipper under here. And that's where I put my sliding board last time. I knew it was weird. There. That makes more sense. Totally what I did last time. Bet you I could put my catheters under here too. I take so many extra catheters just in case. I'm not gonna be in like a city that I can't get stuff, but it's so much nicer to just feel prepared if I take lots of extra catheters. So I'm taking 15 a day, and then I'm just taking a few more extra just in case. And these will fit awesome under here. Look at that, they fit so well. So I've got my clothes, my sliding board, my catheters, my blue pads, I always sleep on these and I put them on my chair when I do bowel routine so I have to take those. Now I need wipes, gloves, uh, lubricant for my bowel routine and uh, incontinence pads because I wear these every day. I need these containers that I pee in in the night. I'm also going to grab my mirror that I use in the middle of the night. These are gloves that I just keep in a uh, baby wipe container. And then I take my toilet uh, seat covers that I always bring with me everywhere. And I'm gonna take my little shower chair pad um, that sits on my shower chair that makes it softer for my butt so that when I shower there, um, I have a soft thing to sit on. Well, this is what the thing, the soft thingy the gel pad looks like that I put on my shower chair. So I'm gonna bring that.
on the road. Here we go. So I got to Calgary, I peed twice on the trip uh, or on the drive here. I went and had dinner with my cousin and just so happened that my cousin picked a restaurant that was right across the street from a full surf gas station, which is like really uncommon. Um, so that was awesome. So I went and prepaid for gas and they gassed me up. So now I'm all ready to go home um, and I don't have to gas up before I go home. So yay, now I'm headed to the hotel and I have to pack in all the shit by myself, which sucks. But once I get there, I'll show you guys the hotel. So while I made it in the room, this is my bag set up. You can barely see it, but it's a duffel bag with another bag and all of the, all of the bag handles are wrapped around my neck so that in case the bags fall off, uh, they don't, in case the bags fall off my lap, they don't fall off me. That's my setup. Pretty, uh, Ingenious, right? When I'm by myself, I always get or try to get a wheelchair accessible room. I don't always need a wheelchair accessible room if I'm not gonna have a shower. As long as I can get to the toilet, I'm pretty okay. But um, this is a pretty impressive room. I like it. So this is uh, the entrance. There is a low closet with a hanger and the ironing stuff and there's some extra towels there which is awesome the microwave is low in this little shelf thingy the bed is low which is amazing it's not a super high bed because a lot of times they forget that so that is awesome a giant bathroom which i'm super happy about a wheel in shower with sort of a lip uh so that's not totally like smooth surface but it's okay and then they did the dumb thing that they always do. They put the water over here and the chair over there because that's super useful for somebody that can't walk. Love that. Uh, so I put the shower head down and sort of rested it in the grab bar. Um, the toilet has a giant grab bar and I put my toilet seat, oop, my finger had gotten there. I put my toilet seat covers on um, the sink is wheel under, which is awesome. And I can see myself in the mirror, which is like, woohoo! Morning guys. Um, I didn't have like that great of a sleep last night. I get like weird anxiety every once in a while. Nice hair. Um, and so I couldn't fall asleep until like 12.30. I always have to fight against my anxiety. Even coming here, I had to fight against my anxiety. My anxiety tells me that shit's gonna go wrong when I'm driving, uh, that I'm gonna have a medical emergency when I'm by myself. Like I tell myself, my brain tries to protect me in the most horrific and sometimes annoying ways. Uh, and I really, for years, I didn't fight against it. For years, I just let the anxiety win and was like, no, it's better judgment to not go and be alone. Um, and I realized that just stopped me from being independent and having opportunities. And it didn't make me more confident. It made me less confident. Uh, and the more I go out of my comfort zone, even though I have anxiety, um, I realized that I'm okay and I can handle almost anything. I kind of had to be okay with dying before I got my anxiety under control. I still have lots of anxiety. Uh, I just do things anyway. If you have, if you're dealing with that right now, you're scared to go places by yourself, um, all that stuff, then you got to do it more. That's the only way to get over the anxiety, truly. Okay, I'm gonna get ready. Get ready for this day. Right now, I am just getting ready to go to my cousin's house. I'm gonna eat my garlic because I even brought garlic garlic with me uh in a thermos cooler thingy and i packed a knife um packed a knife and uh i'm i cut up garlic it's literally like right here um on this desk and i'm gonna eat it i have some food in the fridge that i'm gonna eat um 
right now just because I don't like to eat the garlic on an empty stomach. Ow! And then um, I'm going to take some vitamins and things that I need to take with food. And then I'm going to uh, curl my hair quickly and put my makeup on and head over to my cousin's house. Okay, so I'm just headed to my cousin's house uh, and I'll ask her when I get there if she's okay with uh, being filmed a little bit. And if she is, then uh, I'll introduce you to my cousin who's awesome. Yeah, if you wanna just tell people what your disability is um, and then like all the amazing things that you um, have and do and are a part of, you're just like such a inspiration. I am Dale Sheehan. I'm an interior designer in Calgary, and I'm also have muscular dystrophy. You regularly have to be able to like decorate people's houses, um, and a lot of people that have mobility issues would never go into that field. So, what what sort of mindset did you have, or have to have, in order to make yourself believe that you could do this job and do it well and be successful at it. I honestly thought you're not going to be able to make a living as a person in a wheelchair. That was my, that was the biggest lie I was telling myself at the time. I thought, you know what, you're going to go work for a builder. You're going to sit in the showroom. That's like the garage of the house. And that would be the only job you'd be able to do. So I got out of school. I ended up getting a client and then I got another client. I kept saying, well, after this client, I'll apply for jobs. After this client, I'll apply for jobs. And I think that that was 17 years ago now, and I've never applied for a job. So other than my, just my, to my clients, I always say like, if I ever have to pitch myself or feel like I'm in an interview type of situation, it's so that clients choose me um, as their interior designer. But outside of that, I've worked for myself my entire career. Did you ever, was it just the, um, small confidence boost every time you got a client that allowed you to see a future yeah. as an independent interior designer. Yeah, and like at the beginning I was horrifying. As everybody is when they start doing something new. I was like bad at billing people. I didn't know what I was doing with accounting. I didn't know how to run a business. I didn't know how, I did not value my time whatsoever. So I was like, you know, for $200 I'll work with you. And I just felt grateful that someone was willing to work with me because I had extra challenges, which is such a like backwards, crazy thing to, for me to look back at and think because my ability to design their home was always there. My education on how to design their home was always there. So there's no reason why I had to put my, my rate on sale as a result of some being somebody with a mobility challenge. I can either send somebody into the house to get all the video and Skype or Zoom meetings if it's a challenging space for me to access, like a basement or an upstairs or whatever. Um, or I can do online design boards that I never step foot in the house, but I work off of plans, I work off of pictures, and it's great for the clients because they pay me less because it takes less of my time. And it's great for me because I get to do a lot of my the work at my desk, and that's where I do the work anyways. So it's just a good deal all around, and I love it. Do you... Do you always um, think about spaces with an inclusive lens yes. or do you only do that if clients ask you to? Always. No matter what your ability needs are, I ask quite different questions than other interior designers. And the reason that I do that is because nobody, some people in the family might not need the specific um, extra considerations around their accessibility, but the grandma might or they might have a family member that they never thought of. I want to design a home for every single family member, not just the person with accessibility needs or not just for the people that are have hired me like the parents. How do you go forward? Like same way? No, 
like or you push yourself push forward. Yeah. Oh, do you always go backwards everywhere though? Pretty well. You're a like, lot of the time. you're like good at going backwards. Yeah, it's my thing. It's what I do. So I'm going to meet uh, my friend for ice cream, and then we're gonna head to the comedy show. I don't know if I'm allowed to bring my big camera in there or not, so I'll take it in the car and we'll see. But I'm not optimistic. So um, I might not be able to vlog there at all. And my phone only has nine more minutes of memory. So you guys might get little snippets from tonight. We just went for ice cream and mine was delicious and hers tasted like puke. And Brittany tried it and now both our mouths taste like puke. Yeah, it legitimately like is, it's like a good beginning flavor. And then all of a sudden it's like a puke aftertaste, which is like freaking disgusting. So yeah, nasty, hey? Okay, so I'm going to get a piece of gum to share so that we're like not pukey mouths. We made it! We're and, here. and we got good seeds. Hey guys, I am home and I'm gonna get ready for bed. This is my last night here. I peed my pants, so I have to change my cushion cover before I go to bed um, and change my underwear and all that stuff, which is super annoying. But um, I am like still reeling from going to the bathroom at the show and like watching three women snort cocaine in the handicap stall all together. It was so obvious and I just thought it was hilarious and then like one girl like crawls under the handicap stall like and to the next bathroom stall and like keeps crawling along all the stalls like she's gonna get away from us. Um, so like we can't see her, we're like we can see you, you're crawling under the stalls. Um, it was pretty hysterical so just in case, just in case you're not sure where to do the drugs. It's not in the handicap stall in the bathroom. Okay, I'm gonna brush my teeth and go to bed and that's gonna be my weekend. I'm headed home tomorrow. I'm like super, super excited to go home. I miss my family. I, I had so much fun this weekend, but I really love my family too. So I can't wait to hang out with my kids um, and just relax on Sunday with them. I probably should edit YouTube videos, but I'm not going to. Morning guys, I am, uh, just had a shower. The shower here was terrible because I showed you guys on the first day that the shower head is like on the opposite side of the shower chair. Um, and there's no like um, sliding bar or anything to like put the shower head in once you like turn the shower on. So I had to like balance it in the like grab bar and then turn the shower on so it was like spraying upward it was ridiculous and then um i dropped the shower head and like luckily i could like reach it but it was dumb and then the shampoo dispenser didn't work so i used body wash to wash my hair luckily it like seems like it was actually decent i'm just packing up and then i'm gonna head home and relax with my family for the rest of the day Heading home, uh, I was gonna go for breakfast, but it was busy and I'm not super hungry, so I might stop at our acreage um, on the way because it's on the way home. It's like two hours from here and see what my family's doing and uh, yeah, eat with them or go get pizza at this awesome place near our acreage. Okay, I'm out of here. Thanks for hanging out with me this weekend, guys.